Vectorizing modified coordinates. We had one sixteen. I have our mechanical title block, big size title block, which I downloaded from the D2L course content section. We're going to go through these modified commands like erase, move, rotate, scale, stretch, trim, right, copy, offset, some of the So as we look at these different concepts, what we're talking about is the modified commands as part of this menu area right here. So these are our modified commands. We have move commands, rotate commands, trim and extend commands, depending on whether you invoke. Copy commands, mirror, fillet, chamfer, stretch, scale, Race. <laughs> Explode is a way of breaking a polyline into individual segments and offset. We can use quite a bit of that. And then some of these other commands like So, for a modified command to work properly, you have to have geometry because you have to have something to modify. So, we go through the draw commands first and then we can go through the modify. So for example, to be able to trim a line, and I'll just do this including viewport, I'll have a line like this. And then I'll have another line. That. And then what I can do in this example kind of wants them to be crossed and I trim it by going to the trim command. And then you just select what you want to trim. If I undo that, you want to make it into a modified command for an extension. Extend. And then we'll then extend it to the next button. Move command. A rectangle, and what we'll do is to move. So, what we'll select is the move command, select the objects to move. When we're done selecting, we hit enter, base point to where we want to move it from, and then the point we want to move it to. And that's all there's to it. Now, you can move these with relative rectangular coordinates and things like that. Or we could say move, we could select it, hit anyway. From here, point in this direction, or we could say at three, move it zero, and it'll move it three inches over. But oftentimes, I find it easier to just draw a line three inches long, like this, and then just move it with a construction line. From the end point to the end point, and now you know it's moved three points. Three inches over. Again, second device. And so they show some other options for moving things. Here's our rotate command. And so if we were to stretch this a little bit, so if I want to stretch this, When you stretch things, you may want to have polar or ortho on so that it stretches it straight. And so I have polar on, but ortho is also a good mode. And then if I drew a circle on one of the corners here, I trimmed it. Kind of looks like our exercise right here. And then I'll just move this into the center here. Uh, actually, I just panned it since my viewport is not locked. And then to rotate it, what I would do is I would select the rotate command, select the object, and enter, base point of rotation. You should use O steps when you rotate these. And if you use O step and polar, you can get these tracking angles and however I set that. So if I've got this set, 
every 15 degrees, you know, polar settings, then I'll get a tracking line every 15. If I dial it down to every 10 degrees and okay it, and then I want to do that again, I can go and rotate it. And then I'll get a tracking line every 10 degrees. Counterclockwise angle. So it just depends on how you use these tools. You know. Scale can help. So when we're using the scale command, what we'll do is we'll select the scale command. And so here's our scale command. We select the object to scale, we hit enter. We give it the base point where we want to scale it from. And then you can either do it by eye, or you can type in a value like 1.5 and it'll make it 150% bigger. So if I undo that, and I put a dimension on it. And then I scale that. One point five. Then that value will scale appropriate. Stretch command. You want to stretch something. Again, I recommend having either the polar tracking on and or the ortho mode. If you put on ortho, it's pretty straightforward. It will not go sideways on us. So we can kind of give you an example of what we don't want to have happen. What we don't want to do is to stretch it like this at an angle, because it just kind of gets kind of wonky. And so by having the ortho mode on, when we use stretch, then we can stretch it in a straight line and increase the size of the geometry. Lengthen isn't really used that much. Mostly people will just use grips. And so if we had a three point arc, we wanted to lengthen that and turn off my ortho book, I would click on it. And I can grab that and I can increase that size. It's just not a really very useful CAD drafting technique. It's sort of a geometry thing that you can set up in properties. If you go into the full blown properties command. You can go in here and you can edit the length of your geometry, things like that. And the arc the total arc right here to be able to change that value. Nobody really needs that so much, basically. Trim. You can see if we create some of these constructions here with just some basic line geometry. We use polar. Polar is better than ortho, in my opinion. We're just putting these on by eye. When we go to trim them, we can go through and just select what we want to remove. And so if we want to shape it, it looks like this. We can go through and we can trim out between the lines here. And wherever it crossed another line, we'll get that geometry. It also goes through and shows how to trim with what I call the weed backer or the three thin line. So if you go through trim, let's go through and draw the cursor, you have to pick it up, and then you can drag it. It's a little fast. Here's trim with the fence. It's sort of the same thing. We get multiple lines. 
Can we all set? They have a cutting edge and they go to trim. And then one of the options here is fence. I'm just going to type in F for fence. I don't see where it is. And we can just go through and see where it is. So that's really what they did is they just incorporated the fence to the, into the trim options. Project, I'm going to need to go through. Intermediate uh, okay, this is a leaf command that you might go here and teach you that. Here's our extend command when we go and look at our geometry. We create a line and three point arc. And then we can create another line. And then we can go through and extend these boundary edges. And this is the old way of doing it. And so if we go to extend, we can select a boundary edge. Apparently, it doesn't want to do that. Let's just go. Now it automatically selects the boundary edges. So again, they've simplified the commands. As we go through, all you need to do is go to extend, and it comes out and finds the most of the page. <coughs> the break command is used to break between two points. And so if we have a circle, we want it to break it between two points. Say break, select that circle, and then you can say break it between the right. Break it, select the object, specify the second break point. So currently, where I selected is the first break point, and then the second point will be the second break. Again, I prefer to have lines and just use the trim. It's a more precise way to go through and look at those different commands. Copy command. If we look at how to use the copy command, we can create a circle. And then if we have something like a snap and three down, it says snap. Copy, select the circle. And typically, I'll put the base point in the center, but since I didn't draw it, let's go next to it. And we can copy these geometries. The array command will kind of automate that. And so, for example, if we have a Circle to serve as the center. And then if we were to create like a polygon here, we'll say five sides. Yeah. And if we were to array that, we could array that in a polar fashion, select the object to the polar array, select the center of the circle. And then you can see how many items. The items, six items. You create those different polar arrays. If we were to array something in a rectangular fashion, you come back here and create a rectangle. 
and then we can select a rectangular array. And it will then go through and calculate <coughs> columns will be the verticals and rows will be the horizontal. Offset command is used to offset the lines in a specific link. So as you can see, we get these different shapes. And if you would draw a line here, I would say offset 0.5, enter, you can select the line on the side, line on the side. It'll work for circles and circular geometry as well. You can offset those. You'll we'll remember the last value. And you can offset those. It'll also work with shapes. And more of the array, these are more advanced AutoCAD, so we'll save these for another time. Some of the associativity behind the array command. So, if we were to go back to something that we array and we click on it and then we set up as associative, we can then continue to modify the array again. Same thing for our circular, if it was set up as an associative array. And this one was. And then you can array things along the path. Again, we'll save that for an intermediate movement technique. <laughs> Toilet command, I think we covered considerably if we have two lines. You want to put a fillet in there. The thing that you have to remember is the program in the radius. So if I say radius or five letters, then when I select those two lines, I'm going to get the radius in there. And as we talked about in previous videos, we can put things like polygons. Same thing with the chamfer command. Wanted to put a chamfer on these two lines. They don't have to intersect, but we do need to put in the distance. Let's say we put in 0.5, 0.5, and then we select the lines. We create a chamfer for us. And these are ways for us to go through and work with the chamfer. The first line is the first distance. Okay, that brings us to the chapter exercises. I'm going to stop this recording and post it.